Today, uh, we're going to talk about uh, getting the uh, brake master cylinder out of a, uh, a Morris Minor uh, to either rebuild it or replace it. And I talked a little bit about this when I was talking about the transmission, but I'm going to just do this whole thing about the whole thing. So let's uh, there is the brake uh, master cylinder here in a Morris Minor Traveler. They're all located the same thing. Right hand drive car, it's going to be in the chassis member underneath the right hand side. On a left hand drive North American car, there's provision for it, but there's nothing in there. Okay, so this is, of course, this is a British car right hand drive. And there's our master cylinder there. Now, there's a couple things that are interesting about this master cylinder. It looks a lot like the master cylinder that is in early post war Bentleys and Rolls Royces, like Mark VI's, R Types, and Silver Dons. It looks a lot like a Jeep master cylinder as well. And so it's, uh, it, it, but it, they're not quite the same. So you want to get the right one for the car. Now, the way it works is really simple, really straightforward. There's the brake pedal. The brake pedal pushes the, the rod into it like that directly. Okay. And by putting it under the floor here, it's real easy to do. It seems really clever and uh, pretty straightforward. Very little linkage between the pedal and this. There's a spring. You can see in the back there and uh, you want to make sure that's in good shape. You don't want that to break because to get at this, you have to take up the, uh, the transmission, uh, uh, tunnel uh, cover and you take up there's a little plate uh, on this side here that that comes undone and you take up and you can get to this okay so far so good but here's the thing uh, it has problems one is to check your fluid levels uh, in the brake system you have to sort of basically uh, there's a hole here but in the in the little plate but you basically have to lift your carpets up, open this thing up, and check the uh, the brake level, which like the T-Series MGs have the same thing. It's a bit of a pain, whereas many British cars have the master cylinder on the bulkhead. It's easy to uh, to check the, uh, the the level. It's also pretty small, and so if you're fitted with uh, a more robust braking, like larger disc brakes, you don't have much in this reservoir here. Now, this car has been fitted by with Spridget, um, Sprider Midget uh, disc brakes in the front. Presumably the, it has the capacity because it was like that obviously for a long time. But the thing is if you want to rebuild this and get it out, um, you have a couple of issues that you have to face. The front is pretty simple. I mean there's a clevis pin that's in there and that you basically get at that and, uh, and, and take off that linkage. So that's no big deal there at all. Then you can check the condition of your spring, maybe replace it. The lines that come in and and uh, and out of this system are in the back here, and you can see one of them comes out the side. That's for the front brakes, and then the rear brakes that comes out of the back here, and that those can be tough to get to. And if they've been on there a long time, sometimes you end up basically cutting these lines. You're going to replace them anyway and pulling it out that way. Uh, when I do something like this, I'm going to hope to keep these. I think the lines are in pretty good shape. I don't want to cut them. I like to use um, uh, flare wrenches that go over the tube and they give you a lot of contact points and, uh, and uh, they help to make sure that you don't strip that brake line nut and you can actually get the thing out. Uh, so I like to do that. Now, the other issue that these uh, master cylinders have, which is really a pain in the, um, you know, is they, uh, the way that they're hooked into the chassis member. Basically, they have two bolts that run through the chassis member in the front and the back side of the master cylinder, and they hold the master cylinder securely here uh, inside the chassis member. Now, the way they originally came out of the factory, as far as I know, for most of these cars anyway, was that the threaded nut side was here, and the bolt head was here. And so you'd say, okay, no problem. You could, undo, as long as it's not corroded and rusted on, undo the threaded nut side here on this side, push it through, and draw the bolt out. But there's one problem with that, and we'll go underneath the car and take a look. Okay, so here we are underneath the car, and here we can see the problem. That's your torsion bar there, and you've got one on each side, of course, so it doesn't matter if it's a a right hand drive or left hand drive. You can see by the way the original uh, teal blue paint coming out from under the uh, the undercoating there which is nice to see rather than rust. Um, 
the problem is that those bolts, they come out behind the torsion bar right here and here. So that means if the bolt head is on this side, there's no way you can push it out, right? You could unscrew it from the other side, but you can't push it out. So one thing you can do is you can remove the whole torsion bar, which is a bit of a big job, but you can remove the torsion bar and then uh, push the bolts out. The other thing you can do is you can put some really heavy duty C-clamps on here, put something to support things down here and basically tighten those up and you can basically, um, to form the torsion bar down enough so that you can push the bolt over the top. And that's what a lot of people do because it's faster. And apparently these torsion bars can take it. They won't permanently deform or anything like that. Now, when you put the master cylinder back together, what you can do uh, if the torsion bar is out of your way is do it the other way around. Have the threaded nut on this side and the bolt head on the other side. And then you can just undo the threaded nut here, push it out the next time you have to change. This car has clearly had uh, work done on the master cylinder or a new master cylinder uh, put in because, well, a couple of things. One is the threaded nut is on this side. This is not the bolt head on this side. So we have the threaded nut on this side here. On the other side of the car, I'll show you we actually have carriage bolts. So these are carriage bolts, which I kind of hate because if they strip the square thing that they're in, you're really in a lot of trouble. But someone has already done this and they replaced this with, uh, with carriage bolts. So we're gonna be able to then not have to mess at all with the torsion bar, hopefully. Unscrew these uh, nuts here if they'll come undone, hopefully. And then push the, uh, push the carriage bolts out and withdraw them from the other side. And when we put this back together, we'll do exactly the same thing. That just makes it a lot easier. So the thing is, we wanna make sure that we can get all of this hardware uh, unbolted and on a car that's 50 years old, uh, it can be very, very difficult. As I said, you might end up cutting your brake lines. So let's have a go. Let's start with the brake lines. So as I said, for something like this, I like to use a flare wrench that I can get over the piping and then attach and uh, have a lot of points of contact with that and hopefully not strip it. And let's go. Okay, so it's, I've got movement both ways on it. It's actually very, very loose, so. Good luck on that, good good job on that side. That'll come out easily. What about the one back here? Okay, so we got that get on there and let's hope it will move. Yeah, no problem. Again, almost too loose, but uh, so those are coming out pretty darn easily. Uh, what about the carriage bolts? Let's have a go at that and just see if everything is loose. Okay, here we are underneath the car. There's our torsion bar. We know that those uh, the nuts are behind it. Of all things, um, these were metric, 17 uh, millimeter, which is bizarre. But, you know, when you have a car that's been 50 years old, worked on all kinds of places, you get all sorts of interesting things. So let's see if these will move. Hopefully, now they've been in WD-40 for quite a few days. I haven't done any uh, heat yet, but we could use that if we need it. Okay, yeah, actually moving easily. Let's see if we can get the other one here. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, so these are these are moving easily, so we'll be able to get these off and then hopefully push them through. Okay, there's the, uh, the little shaft, the pin that goes onto the brake pedal and uh, there's the master cylinder uh, out. So this was pretty easy on this particular car. One, because it had clearly been done at some point in the past and so everything was not seized up on it. And secondly, they had put these uh, bolts in that hold the master cylinder in there um, basically with the, uh, the nut side towards where the, uh, 
uh, torsion bars are, and that made it easy to withdraw them and then get the master cylinder out. I thought I was going to have to put this up on the uh, on the uh, the lift and uh, compress that torsion bar down and deform it and get it out. Didn't have to do any of that. Uh, pretty easy job here. I was lucky. Someone had been here before me. If you do this, also uh, go ahead and put those bolts in the other way around so that you can uh, have the nuts underneath the torsion bars and uh, and withdraw them easily. And again, I just I would not use carriage bolts in any uh, way, shape, or form in something like this. Use a regular hex-headed bolt that you can get a spanner on and uh, and get that thing out when you need to rebuild or replace the master cylinder. Not a bad day's work, or actually wasn't very long at all to get this out.